today with Juliana Booz. Did I say hi. your name correct? Did I? Yes. Hi, Juliana. Hi. I think that is a beautiful name. Tell us where you're from. Well, I was born and raised in Bucharest, Romania. And uh, I actually left Romania when I was uh, 29, a few, a few months before I turned 29, and I immigrated to Canada. Wow, that's uh, um, It was in that period of time when Quebec actually wanted to separate from the rest of Canada, and they had the referendum and something. Oh, so okay. they changed the immigration law, and we were not qualifying anymore for other provinces but for Quebec <laughs> so wow. we had to learn French really quick <laughs> I've learned French in four months <laughs> that is fabulous did you have to take classes to learn French or did you just learn that from yes yes being... I had I had uh, a teacher and I've learned enough French in four months to be able to have a conversation with the consul and pass the language uh, exam. <laughs> I love it. So now, so now maybe that's a little bit of a French accent I'm detecting also, or no? Did you pick well, up some of the... Romanian language is Latin. Um, it's, a, it's a mixture between French, Spanish, and Italian. And I, I used to be fluent in French and Spanish. And I can understand any of the three. So either French, Spanish, and I understand some Italian as well. Wow. It's a Latin language. It's the only Latin country there surrounded by Slavics. So <laughs> that is so interesting. So you left Romania, you went to Quebec. So when you left Romania at the time, so but at the time, because you say you're surrounded, you did know some French. You some French you knew? Uh, only what I've learned in those four months. That was all the French I've I knew. I, I knew some Spanish at the time. And then when did you learn when did you learn English? Well, a lot later. <laughs> wow, that is so, so we lived we lived in Montreal for about six to seven months. Um, and this was happening in 1997. So we, we we landed in Montreal sometime at the end of April, I think, if I remember correctly. And okay. in October we moved to Toronto. And that's when I started. To learn English. I think that's fascinating. This is why I don't like to know too much beforehand about the people that I interview, the other authors, because there are so many interesting things I learn just while we're having a conversation. So how did your writing come about? Were you writing when you were living in Romania? Uh, I was handwriting in notebooks, whatever was in my mind, but I never really took it seriously. And um, I was actually discouraged by everyone I knew saying, oh, get a real job, don't be a writer. There's no money in that, you know. Right, like, right. Oh, That's and, terrible. Well, they were right somewhat. <laughs> but, well, you know what it is? I don't think anyone should discourage anyone though. I think that is, I don't, I don't care for that. Because well, that, could I, stop, that could stop a lot of people. That could have stopped you, right? Uh, yeah, but it didn't. My mind. Yeah, no, but, but thank goodness. Do you know how many people it must stop? So when you were at, when you were making your notes, I'm just checking to make sure that we're connecting on here. When you were making your notes um, for your stories and for your books, you were doing that in your own, in your native language, correct? Yes. And then the stories now that you have out, are those the stories that you worked on no, in Romania? Completely different. So they're totally the different. Stories I was trying to sketch down that were like, contemporary for that time and place ah and okay talking uh you know 1990s did you did you save all that did you save have, all that yes i have them with me when we immigrated we actually were allowed two large bags of 80 pounds each the allowance for immigration and uh in one of the bags at least 10 pounds were my notebooks. <laughs> really? So I packed my, my, my life in two bags and, and, and left Romania. But I took my, my, my notes with me. 
I used some of the ideas and adapt them to my um, science fiction, otherworldly um, things, but um, no, most of them, like I said, they're, they're, they were only appropriate to that time and place. Right, right. I think that's great though that you took them with you. You never know, you might do something with them in the future. Maybe, like I said, a couple of them, I, I, I was able to, you know, take the idea from them and develop yes. it, make it into something. But the rest are probably just a nice thing to have. <laughs> yes, nice, nice memories. That's for sure. Yeah, very that's... nice, very nice memories. And you never know down the line, the, those memories might be worth some money too, right? When Juliana Fuse makes it big. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> may, yeah, they may be worth you never know. They may those notes may be worth money. So now were you a big reader when you were in Romania? Did you yes, read a lot? I did read a lot. Um the only problem is growing up in Romania. I, I grew up in a, in a, the communism era when Ceausescu was uh ruling. So it was a lot of censorship. So mm. we were um only allowed to read like in school, for instance, uh, only Romanian authors. Oh. Uh, in if you would go to a bookstore, they there would be all uh, Romanian authors published. Very few um, Russian authors. <laughs> I mm. tried to read Dostoevsky and I couldn't. I admit it. Um, then around. Oh, how old I was. I think I was about 15, maybe 16 when I discovered the black market of the books. So mm. that's when I got my hands on, you know, the three musketeers and the lead, the, the legends of Olympus and um, yeah. Young the Wayne, Margaret Mitchell. She still remains until today my favorite author. Um, it was funny. <laughs> they, looked, they looked like, you know, how in the old days when you would write a book, you would actually write it on paper and then you would bind those pages with a, a piece of string or something. Yes. And that's how those ones looked because somebody, you know, translated them, typed them, and then made copies of them and they would sell those. They, they had no covers, they had nothing, they were just some type right. of paper. And that's how oh. I read mm -hmm. all the way until the until after the revolution when the market kind of opened and more books were allowed in. And yeah, were made available. So yeah, we were under very heavy uh, censorship. So thank heavens though for the people that you know made other books available. That must have opened up a whole new a whole new world. For so it many did, people, did. like I read all my all, all the books that my parents had. I I read a lot. I would say between twelve, thirteen, and twenty one, I must have read hundreds and hundreds of books. Yeah. Like I was reading all the time. Wow! And in Romania, even I know you're saying that you were only allowed to read certain books. Were there like childhood favorites, like classics? Yeah, uh, Brothers Grimm, there were, um, then there were some Romanian uh, folklore um, stories. Uh, so yes, they were. I mean, it was a completely different way of life and a completely different world. Um, right, exactly, exactly. I, I know what you mean. It's so kind of hard to explain it and make it justice because I, I cannot stay you know, objective about it. So <laughs> I understand. I totally understand. So let's let's go on to when you wanted to become a writer, when you wanted to write books yourself. I know you said you made notes and stuff like that, but you didn't think, you know, anything of it. It was just something, I guess, was it like a creative outlet when you were making these notes? It was, like it um, so around, I was about also 15 or 16 when I went on the uh, um weekend trip to Dracula's castle ah. and it was in there in while I was visiting this run down old stone building 
all moldy smell and all that stuff when I go, hmm, these vampires <laughs> must be something about them. And that one was the first time that I came with the idea, well, if they were to be real, where did the first one came from? Right. So that's when I, I knew that someday I need to come up with something. And then about two years later, I got very much into science fiction. And mm -hmm. at that time I read, um, I think, what was his name? Asimov, um, I think. And I just got into that. And till today, I still believe that there's life out there and uh, might be different from what we call life, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there are others out there. So, um, I we just don't want to find that out. <laughs> find the two, and that's how the first series I, I, I published, uh, Bloodline series. That's how it came to be about. It's about alien-made vampires. That's how I explain the existence of vampires. Some I like aliens that. I like came that. to work about two thousand years ago, looking for a home because their home world was about to 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 blow up. Was was about to go extinct. And that's how they created the first vampires as an experiment to see if they would survive in sunlight on earth. Oh, so when you wrote your first book, did you know that you would write more? Did you know it was gonna be a series or did you no. more or less say, oh, I got this one done? Pretty much that's what I thought. I thought it's gonna be that one book. But then I had so many adventures with that book it being my first, my first book that I was writing. I, had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea about, you know, uh, save the cat uh, beats and uh, all the stuff. So I just wrote it. I, I wrote the story that was in my head. And then it went through so many changes and so many edits. I must have gone through it at least a hundred times. Oh, wow. And finally a publisher said, yes, I like the idea, but you need to work on tightening up on you know you you need to polish it a little more when you're done if you still want to publish with us we send it to me and we'll go from there so while i was doing that and rewriting that book for like the 20th time <laughs> <laughs> practice makes perfect exactly. <laughs> that's when i say okay this one story it's not gonna be enough for everything that's steaming in my head now from this so that's when um, I came up with the concept of a series. And when I resend it to that publisher uh, and we're talking about soulmate publishing, they, they, they published my debut series. Um, I sent them the concept for the whole series and uh, they, they sent me a contract for all three books. So when did you first, like, what did you, what did you send out first or how did you contact publishers or how did you know to contact publishers? Like what were those beginning steps? Oh, the beginning steps are so funny. Uh, <laughs> you might tell us, funny is good, funny is good. So actually the Bloodline Origin was not my first attempt to a book to, to send out to publishers. I tried to write contemporary, uh, like a contemporary sweet romance and I failed miserably to it. Uh, I had no idea that you have to have certain point of views. Um, I did not know anything about that. So I wrote it and I felt so confident. I started sending it to agents and I must have gotten at least 80 to 90 rejections. Okay. And that's when I said, hmm, okay, something's wrong. Either my book sucks or they don't know what they're doing. The probability is it's me, no, it's not them. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, my husband brought home one of those, you probably have them everywhere, um, local uh, newspapers, yes. just the local for that city. And yeah, there were yes. some uh, creative writing classes in one of the um, colleges in San Antonio. And I go, hmm, $200 or something, I don't know. It, it wasn't that much and it was, um, two months, eight weeks course, three hours each of the classes. Every Wednesday night I go, I'm gonna go for this. And that was my eye opener. That's where 
I've learned so much and I figured, oh my God, I've been doing everything wrong all along. <laughs> Wow. So I, yeah, it was an eye, it was an eye opener. That's when I've learned everything. But at the same time, it was the first time I had to, you know, take a hit and move on. Because one right. of the assignments at the very beginning, um, our teacher, which we became very good friends, and she's been my 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 friend and my mentor. And Michelle, if you're listening, seeing me. Thank you for everything. She gave us an assignment, an assignment to send in five pages from our work. We were three students in the class. It was, like I said, a late Wednesday night class. And I go, ha, I'm sending five pages from this new one that I got, the one with the vampires. And my happiness only lasted until like the next week when I got edits from the other two students and from the teacher. So on mm. five pages of manuscript, there were like 20 something pages of comments. <laughs> okay, so the, the other, you guys edited your, each other's work too? Yes, the, oh, that was okay. the assignment for like the end of the class. So at the beginning, we submitted the five pages. Then within the next a week or two, everybody you know, critiqued the others, and we would have until the end of the class to come up with those same five pages revised and see, the mm. see what we apply what we've learned pretty much. Right, right. But when I saw those pages, and let me tell you, in five pages, I did not have not even one good sentence. <laughs> oh, okay. There were there was blue green and red the colors are the <laughs> <laughs> there was no white left on that on those pages <laughs> but that you know at the time i know it must have been devastating but now it's uh, nice I went, laugh about I, I, went it. Home, I went home i cried for a couple of days and then i said okay i'm not cut for this i'm not doing this i don't know what i'm doing that's it i'm done i'm not going back <laughs> i'm too embarrassed to show my face and after my first two-day crisis, I looked at it and go, okay, well, but I really want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't give up. Yeah, so I got to work and um, yeah, improved as much as I could. And um, out of the three of us that were in the class, I lost contact with the other two, but I, I don't know that they published anything. And I... Two, and this was two and a half, three years ago. Did this is it's not that far back. So when you wrote your first book, that was two, three years ago? It, it was actually white. It was 2016 because I got the contract from a publisher in 2017. And the first book in the series, um, Bloodline Origins, was published on 2018. Oh, wow. And how did you know to contact a publisher? How did that work? Well, in, in this class, um, our teacher, Michelle, also told us, you know, you don't always have to go to agents. They are smaller publishers out there that they would take work directly from writers. And, wow, I didn't know that. So just looked around. She gave us, you know, some names and looked around and look at other authors. And I came across all my publishing and I submitted to them. And that was the one that eventually said yes. <laughs> After <Yeah>. all, <laughs> my nose. <laughs> and the rest is history. It's fantastic that you joined that class because that class was the beginning of everything for you, really. Yes, and from there I joined the critique group that was uh, held at the library in San Antonio. And um, we were meeting every other Saturday, critiquing, reading, learning more stuff. So right, right. it helped me a lot, a lot. How long, how long would you say you, you knew how to write English when you, you know, first started writing? Uh, like, and how did you even start to learn to write English? You took classes for that as well? Or? No, no. I've learned to speak English at work, uh, on the street, uh, from TV. Um, I learned how to spell, believe it or not, and you're going to laugh, but I used to watch Wheel of Fortune 
It was at Wheel of Fortune. With Pat Sajak? Yes, that's how I've learned how to spell in English. And I've learned um, how to pronounce the vowels, which are very different from the ones in Romania. Yes. So th that helped me, that helped me. Um, so I moved in Toronto in 1998 and I start actually writing in English. First time I got the courage to even attempt writing in English was when I started writing fan fiction for um, Star Wars The Old Republic. Was It's a, an online game that I used to play. And I wrote those in 2014, 2015. So from 1998, it took me a few years to you know be confident that I can actually write or yeah, yeah. I have a, a good enough command of the language that at least I have a starting point and I have something you know to start with and learn along the way. Yes so tell us about that first series so the first book wasn't intended to be part of a series you said correct? The first book was intended to be just that a book and I tend all of my series and all of my books in each of them I have different main characters so I don't carry the same character through two three five ten books I give them their book they get their happy ending and we move on to a different couple <laughs> it's, not, it's a horse <laughs> for too long we're done with this we're not happy let's move on <laughs> I like that I like that so after the first book, um, so the first book, the Bloodline Origins, is um, more or less in a contemporary kind of world, but um, it does go into their vampire secret society, which is a completely different world than what we see and live in. And then it has incursions into their past when I'm explaining how those uh, aliens first came to Earth and they made the first vampires. Gotcha. Let's just see the cover. Let, let's see the cover for that first book. Okay. Now, what is it? Is that an, uh, it's a little hard to see. That, what that is, is the blood drop. Oh, okay. So the cover is like a reddish, maroonish, blackish. Yes. It's like a few, it has and like a maroon and it's got a blood drop. Then the second in the series, that blood drop hits the water and makes a splash. Oh, wow. And in the third book, after the splash is done, there are the ripples in the water, in that blood. Mm. Now, so who, came, who came up with those covers? I, I, I love the covers, and I know they must represent the, state, the different stages. And so who came up with those covers? Well, I had the idea, and then uh, Oren Taylor designs. Um, it's, there's this lady is an amazing designer and um, we actually talked about them and we went back and forth you know usually when you throw a publisher you don't get much saying in your covers it's what they give you and that's it but she, she was kind enough to put me in contact with the uh, cover designer and we worked very closely on them okay. and I did the same thing for the following series um, Again, we work very closely because that was even more complicated to, to, to make those covers because they're all otherworldly. And you know, in deposit photos, you don't really get much of that stuff. So mm. finding the right faces, the right clothing, because people out there don't wear, you know, jeans and t-shirts or, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had to, I'll show you the covers on that too. Um, we had to come up, be, pretty creative so um yeah. she's, amazing. she's amazing and uh she's done an amazing job i love those covers <laughs> that's wonderful i love I, I really love hearing stories like this so now just getting back to your first book when you said it wasn't intended to go any further how did you come up like what made you write your second in that series well the the first book it ends uh with the my main couple living happily ever after only that she being her being a human that was turned into a vampire um she actually had a set of twins so i wanted to tell the twins stories as well 
So the second and the third book, um, Destinies, it's uh, Theodore's story, uh, the, the baby boy, <laughs> but it's 500 years into the future after the big disaster hits Earth, 70% um, of the population and all living things disappear, they're gone. There is only, uh, not dystopian because dystopian is usually very depressing to me, but this is very highly advanced technology and they have portals and speeders and um, instead of electricity and bulbs, they have these floating luminescent globes that go on pre-designated patterns and, and lit up your space. And so this one I found um, a little more relief writing them book two and book three because I could bring in my creativity. Writing contemporary in our earthy, uh, you know, reality for me is very constructive. I cannot, I just can't. If I want reality, I walk outside the door and I'm right there. Right, but right. When, when, I, when I read, they say, write the books you'd like to read, right? Yes. So I would like when I read for relaxation and for, you know, my own pleasure, I want to escape reality. I don't want to read something that, you know, happened around the corner from my house. I'll walk there and see it if that's what I want. So <laughs> that's why I'm writing everything. And all my characters have all sorts of abilities and they do different things. So which us mere humans or not, we cannot do that. <laughs> right. So you create a whole other fantasy world. Is yes, what you do. creating all... Uh, for now, I have two universes created, and I'm working on a third one. <laughs> Love it. So now tell it. Tell us about, now that series is complete. Yes, it's all Correct. complete. Bloodline yes. series is all complete. Was uh, that hard? Did you find that hard to write the final book, knowing, did you know at the time there were going to be no further, no more story to that, no more characters, no continuation you knew? Was that hard for you? It wasn't hard until the last two chapters. Every time I finish a book, the last two chapters for me are the hardest to write because I don't oh. want to say goodbye to those characters. Like I said, even if they're yeah. series and those characters will appear uh, throughout the series in like secondary roles, secondary characters, it's yeah. still, I'm, I'm very attached to them and it's hard to say goodbye. I can understand when it's like the last of the series or then it's even worse because I know I'm losing them all <laughs> forever but at least you could go in your laptop or pick up the book and you can or even in your own mind since you created them yourself you can always still you know connect with them and spend time with them how long in between how long in between books did it take you to write each one like you stopped your first book and then how long did it take you to write the uh, second so the First one I wrote, oh, let's not recount all the rewrites. Let's just focus on the last rewrites. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that yes, was three or four months. And then you wrote your second, then you started your second book? So I sent it to the publisher and you know, it goes in a queue. And until the next, uh, until it came, you know, it came its turn in the queue to get edited, go through three rounds of edits and then get published. I wrote the manuscripts for the next two in the series. Um, so Origins was, like I said, published in April, I think, April or May, 2018. And then the next two were both published in uh, 2019, February and September or October, six months apart. So now that trilogy is complete. That's complete. So then um, do, but it, any time in the future, more ideas start working their way up. I will add and expand on the members of that family because it's a royal family. They're all royalty also because wow. the, the vampires was actually born a blood princess. Um, Henry the sixth, seventh, the fifth, I know, one of his daughters, she was turned into a vampire. So, so you so can continue. If you choose to, you can continue. So that's that's fabulous. So maybe there is, maybe that is not, you know, over. Maybe you're going to continue with that. 
if I ever you... run out of ideas about my uh, space and other world stuff, I might come back to it, but I'm not promising anything. <laughs> and then, okay, so now talking about, you know, the otherworldly characters, tell us about how you moved on now to your next series. Well, after I was done with this series, um, again, I am forever grateful to, to, to the publisher for, for taking a chance on me and publishing a completely new nobody. Um, but being a smaller publishing house, um, you know how it is, they, 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 they help you with covers, they help you with edits, they, they publish it and you're in the world and then you're on your own. Mm. So, my time for writing already got cut in half because I had to start doing all that marketing. Marketing and advertising. And... Business. And I really don't like that. I worked in uh, sales and marketing for 14 years and I hated every minute of it. <laughs> so when I started to write, I did not know <laughs> that I would have to do my own marketing. If I did, oh, wow. I you were probably like, like Oh, this again? <laughs> I'm not doing this. Okay? I refuse. But there's no, there's, it's funny because there was no getting away from it for you. It's no getting away from it. So uh, I had to do it. I had to do it. And then I started writing um, my other big series, how I call it, um, Star Class series. It's uh, at least planned seven book series. I only wrote like five and a half in it. And on February 2020, like right before the COVID hit, like a couple of weeks before the COVID hit, we had a book signing at the um, at that same library in um, in San Antonio, and I got asked to um, join a um, series of twisted fairy tales. So each author, multi-author series. So each author pick a fairy tale and twist it the way you like it. You either make it horror or romance, or you make it, you know, a thriller or crime mystery or science fiction, whatever you want to do with it. All right. Okay, that sounds interesting. I go, how long does it have to be? She goes, well, they're all novellas length. So coming from Bloodline Origins, there's like 94,000 words. And mm -hmm. the other ones are a little over 80,000. So they're full, not, full, full length novels. I had to go down to like 40 something thousand. I go, oh, got to write everything in half. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that was a very big challenge for me because I'm used to a certain rhythm in my books, you know. Yeah. You know it, it, it's a different beat sheet that you use from for novels and for novellas. Less right. plots, less characters, less everything than than in a full length one. Just you know, I'm not gonna skimp on the main characters. <laughs> right, just, right. Cut out some of the others. <laughs> <laughs> but you learned how um, to do that, so that was a challenge. That was a challenge, and my my choice was. Um, my favorite fairy tale, which is Beauty and the Beast. It's always been my favorite. And I chose to make it science fiction, of course. And that's how Adania Tebetelus and the Dark oh. Mask came to be. This was mm -hmm. part of that twisted series. Okay. And the title, uh, you see the title, her name, it's an anagram. For Beauty and the Beast. That's why oh. Adania Tebetelus, that's an okay. anagram for Beauty and the Beast. That's very cool. Unfortunately, on my end, on the receiving end, I'm seeing it flipped. I you, can't, Oh, it's like, yeah, it's flipped the other way. It's backwards. The cover is some, oh, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. But I'm glad that you explained it because then we can understand. That's why, that. that's, that's why those names, anyway, because they'll carry on throughout the series. So when I wrote this, I go, okay, I'll be part of this, uh, you know, um, collection of twisted fairy tales. And I was good with it. Right, right, right. I send it to the publisher and she loved it so much and she loved the secondary character so much that she said, now I wanna know all their stories. 
how about you write a series? I go, okay, I think I can do that. <laughs> so we, we agreed on a five book series, Adanya being the first one in it. And um, the next one I wrote after Adanya, it's her brother, her twin brother's story, Faint, Faint to the Toes and the Chasing Race. So this was the second one published in the series. Okay, and I'm saying that for, for, for a reason because it's actually not the second one, second book in the series. <laughs> oh, explain that. I, I went Star Wars style. I wrote books four, five, six, two, three, and then we added a prequel, <laughs> which became oh. five. <laughs> wow. all, done, all done within 14 months. So from February, That's impressive. I wrote these six books and we were done publishing them earlier this year. Very impressive, very impressive. So I wrote a faint as a second book in the series, then Radix. This is every every lady's favorite. They say that he's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was the third published in the series, but he's actually the last book in the series. And those three that I wrote first, they're like all same generation. So it's Adania, her twin brother, and her cousin. Nice. And then we, I wrote um, those two, Sharice and Kalina. And if, if you see, you see their outfits and everything, and yeah. it, it was a pretty challenging to, to find those pictures and manipulate oh. them, make them look, you know, science fiction. -y. Yeah. But those yeah. are the mothers of those three that I've already showed you. Oh, that's so cool. Those I love that, yes. Mothers. And then also my publisher, after we, we were done with all of them in June, 2021, we were done with this series, five books, done. And then my publisher goes, well, how about we make a perma free? And I'm, okay, I'm all up for it. She goes, well, write another one. Um, how long? <laughs> as long as it's over 10,000 words, we're good. Uh, yeah, that's what gonna happen to me in 10,000 words, yeah. <laughs> so I went back one more generation to the woman that started it all, Karana, and she's the permafree, and she sits at 32,000 words. The rest of them, they're all over 40, 45, 48. That was the word. This one is only 32. So I really try really hard to keep it short. <laughs> and you did, you did. I think you did a great job. Uh, the book is a perma free to the series, is um, a prequel, obviously. So it's first generation. Then we have second yeah. generation and third generation. And at the end of the sixth book, at the end of um, Radex's book, the third generation, uh, we have six little kids running around. So if I ever want to go another generation, I got there another six subjects. <laughs> yes, you definitely can do that. I mean, your books and the stories sound fascinating. And I love the way they go from generation to generation and it's family. And they all and appear in each other's books. So yes, they're all and they're in each other's books. And it's, it's good to read them in order so you won't get spoilers for the other yes. books <laughs> and now a lucky we have people watching with us today and a lucky listener will be getting one of those stories correct um i actually going to um we'll, we'll post the link for the perma free Perfect. and everybody that's listening can go download it Oh, beautiful. So it's not limited to one. Everybody, everybody can get the, the, the perma free downloaded either from Amazon or um, any other book of books for your choice. Perfect. So we definitely will include those links yes. without a doubt. Without a doubt, we will do that. 
So now tell me what's coming up next for you. What's what's on the horizon? Well, I'm working at um, like I said, I interrupted that big series I was working on to write this one. So now I'll have to go back to that one. Um, that series, I still want to actually try and submit for an agent and hopefully, fingers crossed, um, somebody will pick me up and um, eventually place me with a bigger publishing house. Yeah. That's my dream and my absolute, absolute dream is have any of my books made into either movies or a TV show or I don't care what it is, but that's my my absolute dream. I, I was telling my husband, if I ever see a movie or a TV show and my name shows there up on the credits after an original story by Juliana Fus, I go, I can die the next day. I've accomplished everything I want. You'll wanted. die a happy <laughs> woman. You'll die a happy woman, that's for sure. Well, I will say this. I mean, you are such an inspiration to so many people um, from coming from a totally different country and then going someplace else, having to learn another language before you even learn English. And then you have to write it. And I love the way, like, it just seems like it was meant to be for you, I guess, because you had a vision and you kept at it and you knew what you wanted. You knew what you wanted to do and joining that I'm very stubborn. <laughs> well, I guess that helps because I mean, look at where you are today. You wouldn't have, I mean, you came from a place where books were limited and now here you are writing your own books in another language. That's not your native language. I, I really think the whole story is fascinating and it seems like it was, it was meant to be and whether or not it was because you put yourself on that path or just because you, you know, dreamt of it and just wanted it so bad, you have this wonderful story. So I, I do want people out there that are listening and hearing this story, nothing is impossible. I mean, if you put your mind to it and you want something bad enough, you can make it happen. Because you're proof, it happened never to you. It's too late, and it's never too late. I mean, the first book published, like I said, in, in 2018, like three months before I turned 50. So it's, it's never too late. It's yes, not. I dreamed about reading books since I was 16. It took me over 40 years, but got but there it eventually. <laughs> it happened. And you're a writer, so you know how... How, how difficult or how easy it is to write a decent book, a decent story, to edit, to all that, publish it, right? Now imagine yourself doing that in another language. Yes, exactly. That's why I'm saying you are such an inspiration because writing itself has its challenges. And then when you throw everything else into the mix, like another country, that, that not being your native language. I mean, there's so many things you have to learn as a writer to put a story together. Like you said, the first time when you got your edits back or your critique and you were like, oh my God, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. So there is a formula to it. There is a science to it. And when it's not your language, that makes it especially difficult because now you have to appeal to readers that you, you know, that not in your native language or how you form words and sentences and so it is pretty amazing i have to say good for you well i just had a little more challenges than the average writer let's say it you did but you didn't let them out that i say it that way we're not gonna get into the days when i was banging my head again that's why i'm pulling my hair or crying or oh what am i doing what did i get myself into so uh yeah but you did it. And look, nine books later, right? Nine books later, look where you are. Nine books, yes. Nine books and counting. And counting, like I said, in that, in that series that um, I'm trying to get out there at some point, um, there'll be seven more. And each book wow. takes place in a different world, again, different main characters. The only right. thing all these have in common, um, all those main characters, they're all girls, uh, they went to the same high school. And the last day in high school, 
they all got a um, gold star tattoo on the inside of their wrist and they made they they swore to to find their happy place in the life so, so to be happy yeah. and then you know each of, i'm showing each of those goals you know adventures and how they eventually reach their happy so when those, well, those ones can be read out of order um there won't be uh interference from one to the other that is the last time they actually all see each other that last day of high school and then they all went out in the world in separate ways yes and i have different worlds with the, like a frozen planet a planet where time doesn't exist another planet that's all shifters uh and they don't have chlorophyll so all the vegetation instead of being green because that's what chlorophyll does and they're everything purple um, that's my favorite color <laughs> so you might want to read that one when, when sounds good to me yeah okay. i'll go right at home <laughs> But again, even those five and a little bit that I wrote, they're still in first draft. I didn't do any reading anything. Like I said, I had to put it aside for the past year and a half. Right, right, and, right. Uh, I'll, I'll eventually get back to it. I just have to get into that state of mind yeah. where I'll be okay to get rejections because that's all I can think about. And every time I, I try to open the document, and read it and I go, oh my God, this is going to get rejected. Click, I, I closed it and I walked away. No, I can't, I, 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 can't tell. I, I don't want another baby rejection. <laughs> and, and you know, I find it amazing that with, with all this after now that you have nine books that you're still worried, you know what I mean? That it still is like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm going to get rejected. I don't know, do, do writers ever feel, do we ever feel secure enough to say, I can like, to not think about rejection or bad reviews or no, whatever happens. I think at the moment we feel confident enough that we are good enough. That's the moment when our work is going to start to suffer. To, to, to we'll suck. Stop. Because you're yeah. not you're not trying to outdo your last book. Because yeah, that to me that's all that. about I gotta write a book that's better than my last. I'm not yeah. gonna write one that's better than J.K. Rowling's or Stephanie Mayer's or you know any other big names out there, but I am gonna write one that's better than my last, or at mm -hmm. least that's what I aim to. Well, I'm sure that's why J.K. Rowling's and Stephanie Meyer's and all the other big names. That's exactly what they try to do too, because once they don't outdo themselves from their past book, like you said, the work it starts to show, and. Uh, yeah, it starts to deteriorate. So, but that's a very good point. Very good point. Always try to make your next story better than your last story. And I always doubt that it's going to be good enough. And I'm always like, uh, probably because I started with all those avalanches of rejections coming from all right. the place. Maybe it's that left something on me that I will always doubt that somebody is actually yes. going to accept it. Yeah, but, I bet the negativity and the doubt and the whole the whole struggle. So I mean, nobody ever wants to face that again. But I guess we can't help sometimes. It's always, I guess, in the back of our minds. It's something we can't forget. Like so yes, I, I I I admit I've grown a lot since those rejections. I've learned a lot. Um, it's no really comparison between what I sent at that time out the first draft of a contemporary in that, that, you were in that class I know, I know nothing and what i'm writing now but i still cannot help thinking well it's this genre that i think i kind of wrote myself into a corner with this um, romantic um space opera mm. because it's not how should i put it is not sciency enough for male readers and is not spicy enough for the female readers because okay. i like clean romance so i my characters do fall in love there there's always a, a love story in my books there's a lot of tension but i always close the door 
So my books can be read by, you know, 14 plus. So, you know, body parts, no, no, no cussing, no, no. I, I write pretty clean. I write pretty right. clean. Um, well, that's which, good to know. Which does not appeal to many of so-called romance readers because they expect steam. I even had a lady that I, I, I sent her a, a free copy. She said, yeah, sure, I'll read it. I, I love romance. So I sent it to her and then she contacted me a few days later. She goes, I, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna post a review. I go, well, what happened? She, she goes, it had no sex scenes in it. This is not the kind of book I'm expecting when I'm reading romance. Uh, and so. Well, it's clean, but I mean, there's clean romance. I know I'm starting to, to, to state that every single time I, I, I talk about yeah. my book or it, make posts or anything i always make sure i say it, that it's clean romance yeah so that's a good point packed steamy uh scenes in it right and then okay. i i also noticed that being uh you know having falling under the science fiction category a lot of women are pulling back from it like, oh, i'm not gonna read aliens well, they're not aliens. I don't write that kind of science fiction. They're all humans. They're just not, the action's not based on Earth. So they're all in different planets, different worlds, you know. Like we hop on a plane and go from one country to another. The characters in my books, they jump on a ship and go from a world to the next. Again, I don't go in details. I'm not going to tell you how that ship flies or how the engine works or, you know nothing like that you have in the contemporary uh, novels you know somebody's driving a car my characters will drive a speeder or they go through a portal and they're on the other side right. which is something that could happen in the near future <laughs> i mean it probably does happen and we just don't know about it <laughs> which could happen which it could happen or it's, like you said it's probably already happening in some underworld <laughs> stuff that we, we just don't know about it Attitude. And your, char your characters look human. They are all Correct? human. They all, they they're human, some, they look human. They're all human. There are some uh, secondary characters, and even in the other series, um, they're still humanoid species. So they're still human, but they might have green skin or blue skin or purple skin, or they have, um, you know, the, 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 pointy ears or, you know, I make them all different or they have gills and they breathe underwater, but they're all humanoids. So I'm not mm. you know, going into the bestiality <laughs> branch of right, it right. or the gory, bloody alien stuff. It's, it's nothing like that. Yeah. Well, your stories do sound super interesting. Your book sounds super interesting and you are uh, just such a delight and an inspiration to so many <laughs> aspiring writers. And it was such a pleasure to speak to you today. I gotta say, thank you so much for joining me. I had such a great time. For having me, if, if, if any time uh, you wanna talk more about it, please feel free to let me know. I would come oh, back. Definitely. definitely. So if you had, um, I know we spoke about a little advice for people not to give up, but if you, if you could offer or you know, just elaborate a little bit more for any aspiring writers, or like a like something motivational for someone. What would you say to an aspiring writer? To an aspiring writer, um, develop thick skin first of all, because it's going to be a lot of critique thrown your way, um, and you have to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, mm -hmm. But you also have to not dismiss anything. Um, back home, we have a saying, when two people tell you you're drunk, you go to sleep. <laughs> when, when, when more than one person tells you that something's not right about your writing, maybe you should listen and revise mm -hmm. it and try to improve it. Um, yeah, we all hope we're going to make it big one day and we're going to live the millionaire's lifestyle in luxury and comfort but that doesn't happen for most of us but yeah keep going at it don't give up like 
like I said, I'm I'm stubborn. I'm I'm a very stubborn person. Don't get into an argument with me. <laughs> I'm gonna make my you point. won't quit. <laughs> you won't quit. And that's unless, unless I know he's a lost cause and <laughs> just back out. And, <laughs> and okay, it's just, it's just a waste of time, right? <laughs> but your stubbornness, look how far it got you with your book. So I'm so I, happy. I was stubborn you. enough to, to keep at it and overcome all the obstacles. And like I said, you know, I had at least twice as many obstacles as your average author by writing in a language that's not my native. But it's funny how after all these years of, of plotting books and, you know, I a halfway platter pencil, they're all in my head. I don't write right. anything down. I try once to write an outline and I had to read it in pieces and throw it away because I felt constricted. Like I wrote it, so I have to follow it. Right. It, was just, it made me very uncomfortable to have something written down that would make a commitment for me. Yes. So I had to rip it off, throw it away. <laughs> I don't have to work with that. Okay. No, yeah. I can work. <laughs> yeah, I but totally I always, get it. But I always know where I start, where I end, what's the main plot, characters, and then I go into the little details. But I always plot that. And when I'm actively writing from one day to the next, let's say I'm writing today in the morning, afternoon, in the night, I won't write. I will just watch something mind numbing on tv and my mind is gonna go plot the next chapter so tomorrow morning when i wake up i have it all plotted down i'll just sit down and write it and repeat the process day to day to day to day but don't give up keep going yes. and try to be objective of your own value yes we all like to believe that our work is the best but it's probably not and as long as we have the willingness to to learn and to improve i think it's it's always open for for growth yes i agree always open for growth so do not quit guys hang in there <laughs> hang in there be stubborn right be stubborn, be stubborn. you're gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one be stubborn do you have any advice for aspiring writers be stubborn because <laughs> it clearly it clearly worked for you I really believe that if you really want something hard enough, yeah. you will make it. You can, yeah. If you want, yeah. If you want something bad enough, you there are ways, and you're going to find a way to get enough. it. And you are, and you're living proof right there. So thank you so much. Thank and guys, I just want to remind you, I am going to post the link that way for the free ebook, right? And the title of the book again is Karana Baro. Oh, again, it's going to be upside down. <laughs> Okay. Let us see, Mark. Yes, but now, you guys, you know what cover to look for. So that will be a free ebook. And, and if you and read it, don't forget to review. Don't forget to review, right? Well, that'd be nice. <laughs> Although sometimes I have to say, sometimes it, it feels like I would have better chances to get a kidney than a review. So if if anybody reads it and reviews it, I am forever grateful. But I know from experience that most people won't review or you know let's think positive, oh, we'll the, positive. the readers and viewers awesome. today are reviewers so they'll definitely review we're going to be on a positive note with that one and you yeah. wanted did you want to show us something yes yesterday i got my uh poster that i made for karana since she's the last one to join the family oh, let me move the furniture <laughs> oh yes that's fab. Look at that poster. So now will you hang that on your wall? Yes, along with the rest of our family. Yes, I see back there you have like a oh, little That's pool. just a little one here. Ooh. Uh, all of the others. Fab, those are fabulous. Fab. Now, do you get those? Do you have an online source or do you take it somewhere? How do you get those? I actually work with Vista Print. I sent them the, the cover with a high enough resolution to be made into those large posters, which I make them on foam boards and put them on the wall with command strips. So when I have book signings and stuff, 
I take them with me and put them on an easel. Mm. And they look all nice and uh, attractive. They do look very nice. They do. <laughs> I love them. I'm interested in getting some myself. <laughs> I can oh. give you links and stuff where to go if you want to look. Thank they you. Had, I would they, love had, they had the sale on Thanksgiving. Was everything like 70% off? Oh, wow. That's big. We just, my husband helped. Uh, well, he didn't help. He actually did it. He created a studio for me. So I have some place to write. So I just need some things for my wall. And I did want larger, uh, like posters of my book covers. So, but I see yours now. And I'm like, that's exactly what I want. That's what I want to put on the wall. This one came up to like 40 something dollars. Yeah, well, that's it's plus it's I don't, I don't think that's that's Vista print is actually operating from um, Netherlands. So, <gasps> well, I don't think that's bad at all for a giant size of your book cover, right? Because you could stare at it. It's 20 <laughs> by 36. Okay, that's so good to know. Maybe they have a one bigger can... size than that, but I don't have that many walls. <laughs> You're writing so many books. Oh my gosh, you're going to need a whole other room. Well, all I have of the, the, the Bloodline series. I have it here in front of me above the desk. Same size posters for all three of them. Yeah. So yeah, I got nine, nine, nine posters now in here as well. It's great, to be, yeah, it's great to be surrounded by what you love to do. And that's writing. And you could see your covers and you could look at them and say, yes. I, when you're feeling that way, like you say, then you could look at them and say, why am I feeling like this? Because look at all look these what I did. I wrote these books. It's amazing. And like I said, you are a huge inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me today. And guys, don't forget, if you do read Juliana's book, we're going to provide the link, leave a review. She would love to know what you think. And I want to thank you all, guys. I didn't get to talk to anybody today, but we have Heather joined us and, and Josephine and Bruce, Anthony. So we, we have people watching. Thank you all. Don't forget to hop on. Click on the link that we're going to provide and check out Juliana's book. Okay. Thank you, thank so, you so much, much for having me. Thank you. It was a wonderful day. And thank you guys. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.